suffering and misery Our hearts are longing for the endless home Of peace and love and harmony No more bitterness, hatred or greed Paradise is the place we need I feel the peace peace inside of me Greetings and peace. This is Dr. Lawrence Brown with another episode of Interfaith Issues. Today I'm going to be discussing Jesus Christ as the concept of Son of God. We left off last time having discussed the Christian concept of Jesus Christ having been not made. I am now moving on to the Christian concept of Jesus Christ as the Son of God. To begin with, I would like to read a rather amusing quote from Mark Twain. Mark Twain once wrote, One of the most striking differences between a cat and a lie is that a cat only has nine lives. It's a beautiful, it's a humorous, it's a nonsensical statement. In the same way, we sometimes encounter similarly nonsensical statements in various serious matters, such as religion. Christian missionaries are fond of using a particular argument called the trilemma. The trilemma is an argument that they put forth in which they say, look, Jesus was one of three things. He was either a lunatic, a liar, or the son of God as he said he was. Well, When the question is put to you like that, you are only offered three choices. Jesus Christ was either a lunatic, a liar, or the Son of God, as he said he was. What is the answer to that? Well, quite obviously, I feel he was not a lunatic. He was not a liar. He could only be what he said he was. But what was that? Where did he call himself the Son of God? If you answer nowhere, you're correct. Now, again, please don't trust your Bibles in its translation. Look to the original scripture. We will come to this discussion, but the point is that Jesus Christ called himself Son of Man 88 times. Nowhere did he call himself Son of God in a begotten, not made sense. The language might have been used metaphorically, but it was used metaphorically in many places. Let me give you an example. What does Son of God mean? When we find, quote, for I, God speaking, for I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim, Israel, is my firstborn, Jeremiah 31, 9. What does it mean when we read, quote, Israel is my son, even my firstborn, Exodus 4.22. We learn that God has described in the Bible others as his son, or perhaps I should say the Bible authors have described others as God's son. As with the term Christos, when we were discussing the fact that Christos, which is translated to Christ, is not an exclusive term. We find 38 kings, priests, and patriarchs described as Christos. But when we find Christos as referring to these kings, these priests, these patriarchs, it is not translated in the Bible as Christ. Only when you find Christos referring to Jesus do you find it translated as Christ with a capital C. This is an obvious inconsistency in Bible translation. 38 Christoses are not called Christ. One Christos, Jesus, is called Christ. Why? Well, 
Let's read Hastings' Bible Dictionary. Quote, In Semitic usage, sonship is a concept somewhat loosely employed to denote moral rather than physical or metaphorical relationship. To denote moral rather than physical, not physical or metaphorical relationship. Thus, sons of Belial are wicked men, not descendants of Belial. And in the New Testament, the children of the bride chamber are wedding guests. So a son of God, stay with me, a son of God is a man or even a people who reflect the character of God. There is little evidence that the title was used in Jewish circles of the Messiah and a sonship which implied more than a moral relationship would be contrary to Jewish monotheism. Do we find other examples of, quote, sons of God? Well, what about Adam? What about Adam in Luke 3.38? Quote, Adam, which was the son of God. Well, we read Matthew 3.17. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. This does not erase the previous scriptures I quoted, which refer to Adam and Israel as God's son. Do you want another? Read 2 Samuel 1 Chronicles 22.10. Quote, He, Solomon, shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. God speaking, according to the Bible. Entire nations are referred to as sons or children of God. Genesis 6-2, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men. Deuteronomy 14-1, ye are the children of the Lord your God. Job 1-6, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. 1 John 3, verses 1 through 2. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Behold, now we are children of God. In Matthew 5, 9, Jesus allegedly told his disciples, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Graham Stanton, one of the greatest scholars of the New Testament in modern day, wrote, quote, In the Greco-Roman world, heroes, rulers, and philosophers were called sons of God. Who? Heroes, rulers, philosophers. He doesn't mention prophets, less than prophets. Heroes, rulers, and philosophers were called sons of God. In the Old Testament, Son of God is used of angels or heavenly beings, Israel or Israelites, and also of the king. Joel Carmichael, quote, The title, Son of God, was, of course, entirely familiar to Jews in Jesus' lifetime, and indeed for centuries before. All Jews were sons of God. This was, in fact, what distinguished them from other people. As I mentioned before, Jesus Christ referred to himself as Son of Man 88 times, never once called himself the Son of God in a begotten, not made sense. Don't listen to me. Listen to a reference of the Christian faith. The New Catholic Encyclopedia, quote, in reference to Son of Man, quote, this title is of special interest because it was the one employed by Jesus by preference to designate himself and his mission, Son of Man. Harper's Bible Dictionary. It is noteworthy, however, that Jesus never claims for himself the title Son of God. Like I said, don't listen to me. Listen to the Christian scholars about their own work. 
Harper's Bible Dictionary. It's too good to, to read it once. I have to read it again. It is noteworthy, however, that Jesus never claimed for himself the title Son of God. While he is represented as accepting it in Mark, both Matthew and Luke are at pains to tone down Jesus' acceptance of the title as though what he says to the high priest is, it, like the title Messiah, is your word, not mine. Hastings Bible Dictionary, quote, whether Jesus used it, son of God, of himself, is doubtful. Well, many Christian clergy openly acknowledge what I have just said, but they say, okay, Jesus never called himself son of God, we admit, but others called him son of God. So that means something. Well, there's an answer to this too. One of the answers is that there are two words in the Greek that referred to Jesus Christ or referred to anybody as son. They are pais and huios. The Greek pais is derived from the Hebrew ebed, the first translation of the meaning of which is not son, it's servant, servant of God. Everywhere you see pais or pais theo, son of God, if you translate it according to the correct translation, the first meaning of the word ebed, the translation is servant of God. In this manner, Matthew 12, 18 would read, Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. And on that note, we'll take a break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Paradise is the place we need. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is your brother in Islam, Mamdouh Muhammad. You're watching Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Al Aziz, Al -Aziz. The, Almighty. the Almighty. Al Wadud, Al -Wadud. The, All the All Loving. Al Tawab, The Acceptor of Your Return. Al Razak, The Provider. Al-Raqib, the All-Watchful. Walillahi al-Asma'u al-Husna, to Allah belongs the beautiful names. Fad'uhu biha, to call him upon them. To understand more of Allah's beautiful names, join me, your brother Majid Mahmoud, on my new series about understanding Allah's beautiful names on Peace TV. Don't miss the chance to comprehend the seamless explanation of Allah's beautiful names in Understanding Allah's Beautiful Names every Saturday at 8 p.m. and repeat telecast at 11.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. Knowledge insufficient. I was born into a Christian family. My years and years and years, 30 odd years studying Christian belief. There was no relationship between what the preacher was saying and what was in the Bible. Attitude incorrect. Philosophies incomplete. PhD holder in Christian theology to come and teach. But the book that he was using was the writings of Imam Ghazali. You have to be equipped first. You must have good knowledge of your deen. Gaining knowledge or spreading Islam. But confusions cleared. Islam in question. 
Do you believe in God and the last day? It's important for you teaching people how to do Tao effectively. Islam is a way of life. As the world grasps the Islamic perspective, Islam understood in Islamic Quotient, next on Peace TV. is the place we need. Welcome back, this is Dr. Lawrence Brown continuing with this episode of Interfaith Issues. We are discussing the concept of Jesus Christ having been called the Son of God in Christianity. We left off with an analysis of the Greek word pais and how it is mistranslated to Son of God, whereas in fact the first meaning of Ebed, from which Pais is derived, is servant of God. And I just read a passage in which I said, if we applied this correctly, Matthew 12, 18 would read, Behold my servant whom I have chosen. Now, I'm playing a bit of a trick on the audience with reading the passage with this introduction. Because in fact, Matthew 12, 18 does read, Behold my servant, translated from the Greek pais, my servant whom I have chosen. It is Matthew 3.17 that reads, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. My point being that even the Bible translators recognized that in places, pais was correctly translated as servant. So the question is, why is this word played with? What better place for God to have said, Behold, my son, whom I have begotten. But he didn't say that. The translation is, Behold, my servant, whom I have chosen. So, once again, I return to questioning. Why is there this inconsistency in the translation? We find eight mentions of Pais Theo in the New Testament. Five refer to Jesus, three are divided between Israel, David, and of those mentions of Israel and David, we have to recognize that if one of these three is called the Son of God by this designation, Pais Theo, the other two have to be as well. You cannot say one is Pais Theo, and that means Son of God, and the other two are Pais Theo, and that means something else. So, where does this bring us? This brings us to an analysis of the second word translated to Son in the English language, and that is Huios, H-U-I-O-S, as we would write it with English characters. But in the use of this word, Translating it literally to the use of son in son of God is again a mistake. Why? Because in the New Testament, we find this word translated to son in so many metaphorical ways that you simply cannot understand it literally. We find Jesus defined as huios, to Mary, son of Mary. That makes sense. We find the believers as the sons of the king. That is metaphorical. We find God's elect as the sons of Abraham, even more metaphorical. We find the believers as God's son, one more step up on the metaphor. We find the students as sons of the Pharisees. We find the favorite disciple described to Mary as her son. We find sons of the kingdom. We find sons of peace, sons of light, sons of this world. We even find sons of thunder. Now, if anybody is going to say that that is a literal translation, I have to say that really they need to increase their lithium dosage because it is very clear this is metaphorical language. So we have reached a point where I would like to make a little bit of a synopsis, a little bit of a a summary. To begin with, we assume Jesus to be exactly what he called himself. He never called himself the Son of God. 
but he did call himself the Son of Man 88 times. In any case, in Jewish idiom, Son of God was a metaphorical term that was applied to many people, sometimes to groups of people or to populations. The primary translation of the phrase pais theo is not son of God, but servant of God. Huios, which is translated from New Testament Greek to the word son, is used metaphorically with such frequency that we cannot apply it literally anywhere. Hence, when others spoke of Jesus as son of God, the metaphorical sense can be assumed. Another argument that the Christians put forth they say, okay, we agree Jesus never called himself the Son of God. We agree with everything you just said about the metaphorical use of the term Son of God. But you know what? Jesus Christ, when he was talking to his Lord, he called God Father. What do you call God? I bet it's Father. As a matter of fact, isn't this what Jesus Christ taught his followers to say? in the most famous Christian prayer, written twice in the New Testament. When you pray, pray in this way. Our Father, not my Father, not Jesus' Father, our Father. We can go through the many arguments, the many dismissals of the argument. I think it is perhaps easiest for me just to say that for every claim there is a rebuttal that makes as much sense as every claim and rebuttal that I have offered so far. This is a lengthy chapter in the book that I have written on the subject, and I would invite all those who want to increase their knowledge or who want to explore what I have written on this subject, please go to my book, Misguided, you can find it on Amazon.com. You can find it on my website.